view with members of the Cox family that used to live here many years ago. Okay, that that's that pushes it. Okay, do you have a recording going? Okay. Okay, let me have it. Yes. Okay, all right. Yes. <laughs> well, good afternoon. I am so glad to have a brief moment to uh, talk to Clark Cox and his uh, family and friends. And we'd like to just have them introduce themselves first and tell them a little bit about where you grew up and just one memory of growing up in Mesquite and Bunkerville to start with. So you can start, Clark. Okay, thank you. I'm Clark Cox. I was born in Las Vegas and then moved to Glendale. And after that, seven years there, back to Las Vegas. And then uh, moved to Bunkerville in my sophomore year of high school and graduated from Virgin Valley High School. And uh, although we had close connections with our grandparents and great grandparents and aunts and uncles and cousins in Bunkerville, so we always spent a lot of time, especially during the summers, visiting with relatives and having a good time. I'm uh, Dora Cox Adams, and I much have the same uh, background as my brother Clark. Uh, I was in the seventh grade when I moved to Bunkerville, and um, I love Bunkerville. Could you take a minute and point yourselves out to the camera and the pictures there in the old photograph? This is my brother Clark, and uh, this is myself, and this is my younger sister, my older brother, the oldest brother, and the oldest sister. Thank you. Yeah. If I did mention that uh, we have our parents, Manor Cox and Vita Cox, Vita Levitt Cox, both uh, grew up in Bunkerville, in fact they were born there. And, uh, so always very close ties to the first battle. Let's have you introduce yourself and how you're connected with all these people. I'm uh, Mervyn Adams, and I was born in St. George, but my entire life was spent in Bunkerville. Uh, I knew them before they moved over because they come in the summertime so many times. Uh, all three of us graduated from school in Bunkerville. Tell us, yeah, tell us a memory about going to school in Bunkerville. Oh, what I remember about school, other than the classes and stuff and whatnot, was the sports, of course. We were, I think it was a year ahead of me in school, but we were, were into football, basketball, and track, and everything that was played then, we were both connected with. And uh, then what I remember is the dances. Dancing was our entertainment. It was the community entertainment. It was either over here in Mesquite or over there, and everybody went. Our grandmothers went to the dances, or uh, our parents went. And, you know, uh, and even if you brought a girl to the dance, you danced the first set with her and the last set, and then you danced with everybody else in between. You, girls lined up on one side, the boys on the other. And, you just made a mad dash for the girl you wanted to get to. If you got that first, then you danced with her. Now, would this picture have any meaning or memory to you? Uh, that was before I knew them. That was before I knew them. And, uh, Actually, when we moved there, and was he, neighbors. He's never forgiven us as a family because when we moved to Bunkerville, we moved right in next to his house. Do you have any ties to St. Thomas relatives? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, on the Jones side and, and uh, the, uh, the Grandma Cox. And, but see, my uncles, I had three uncles in St. Thomas when the lake came up. And they were bought out by the government and moved. In 32, they moved into Logandale and built, each built some homes right there. And it's one of the old homes. Well, two of them still stand. I had three uncles there. I had uh, my granddad was the 13th family to move into Bunkerville. My mom was born in Bunkerville. My dad was born in Bunkerville. 
and could give us their names. Uh, Harley Adams is my father, and, and Betsy uh, Levitt Hardy was my grandmother. I'm related to the Hardys over here uh, that are in this valley now. My granddad, Hardy, uh, Heber Hardy, was a full brother to the Hardy that moved over here, uh, Charlie Hardy and Aunt Reen were over here. And so, so you're related to Margaret somehow? Uh, Margaret married uh, uh, first cousin of my dad's. I mean, my mother's, she married uh, Heber, and not he, yeah, Heber Hardy, the Heber Hardy. He drove the school bus for us all our lives. And uh, he, his mother and my grandmother were full sisters, and the two Hardy boys were full brothers. So they, uh, yeah, were related. They were double cousins. In relation to St. Thomas, as some of the relatives did, Helped settle St. Thomas. And then uh, my mother actually graduated from Virgin Valley High School and she took one year of normal school in St. Thomas and helped clean the old hotel that was there to to uh, help pay her way. Does that remember anything? She had the uh, Gentry Hotel. Oh, yes. That's, that's the one. That's where she worked. She cleaned rooms and stuff to go, enough to go to normal school. I'm going to take some video. Just, just keep talking. And she, uh, after she had completed school at St. Thomas, she took a job teaching school at the gym camp in Glendale, Nevada. And uh, she had all ages there. She was one of the smallest persons in the classroom because most of them were older boys, of, of sons of minors that were working in the gym camp there. And Mary Madoff, I got that for sure when she. Did you, did either any of you remember this building, or did you ever go there? What's the where is it at? I've gone there when I was a kid, but I don't remember the building. Where I remember that? going there shortly Thomas. after St. Thomas, the people moved out of St. Thomas. Yeah. And uh, there still were some houses around and so on, and then years later, you know, as you see down there now, the water is low as the foundations rock walls and some of the old trees that have died from the water. But you did visit it when you were little then. Oh yes. The public yes. Mm -hmm. Used to go by there on the way to the what they call the salt mines. Uh -huh. Down along the lake, I guess on the lake bed, now. Bed, yeah. uh, there's a mountain of salt there and we used to go get salt for the animals and to keep them grill at all times. So Dora, what did you and your brother and sisters do for fun growing up? We rode horses, we uh, Went to the school dances, we had hay rack rides, we had chicken, uh, Dutch oven, chicken cookouts. We made the fun we had. You didn't have any other fun other than the organized dances through the And was there, and was there connections with Mesquite much? Or oh yeah, all the kids Everybody. went to school in Bunkerville at that time. All, all the high, high school, school kids. Yeah, junior. and junior high. And so everybody knew each other. And uh, we were all, I mean, now you see them, we're just all so connected still after all these years because of the experiences we had together. Smaller group. Oh, Small no. group. Yeah, we, uh, group. Uh, our class, the class I was in, is the only class that ever came to Mesquite okay. School. When I was in the first six grades, Mesquite had the first to sixth grade over here, and then they had the seventh, eighth, to ninth was over here. Bunkerville traveled over here. The high school kids all went there. But they switched that and put all grammar school over here the year I graduated in the sixth grade. So then seventh, to eighth, to ninth, all the way through. And so I was in the class that just made the switch with the kids from Littlefield and Mesquite. In Bunkerville, all went to school together. We were all the and yeah, and pretty much related. Uh, uh, it was kind of hard not to be related in those days with the first settlers because of the large families and they intermarried. And it was just uh, 
by now, when you talk about one of the old families, you're talking about our relations. You better be careful what you say. <laughs> well, one of the great things about high school, uh, having come from Vegas uh, after a year of high school, it was a terrifically big high school, 450 students. Yeah. We come over here where it's a high school of probably less than 75 in the high school itself. A wonderful opportunity and small classes and everybody knew each other and uh, really I thought got along very well oh, yeah. and enjoyed one another. What I remember about some of that is you didn't try out for you didn't try out for a part in the opera, which we had every year. You were assigned. I mean every kid took part and uh, it wasn't that uh, you wanted that part. The one thing That's the way it was. You were given and everything. That was your assignment. Yeah. The one thing I remember that we look forward to in the spring, we all went to the bee, to paint the bee up on the, and that was an all day thing. First day of April every year. Uh, we cleaned the building and the boys got the whitewash ready and then everybody went up to the team and wagon or a horse and spent the whole day and then we had a dance that night. And uh, we look forward to that. No, that's something that the kids miss. We went to the, we went to the base of the beach, and in the last part we crawled up there. The seniors went up with brooms, and they painted, they whitewashed it, and all the rest of us, if we were younger, we carried a bucket at a time. We mixed the lime and the water when we got to the base of the hill. And them seniors didn't care if they used that old bucket on one rock. You know, was, they weren't carrying it, so they were just using it up. But everybody got their turn when they were a senior, they got to do the same thing. For the most part, the school was the very same school building, which our parents attended. Yes. The gymnasium was in the That one the building, they had gone there, and they went there, and they were part of it. So I was trying to really, find information for them. Really, I know there. Really high school. This is going to be a little challenge. Just a memory or two about the old store in Rockville. Do you remember the milkshakes? There were two of them. They didn't know each other. Now there was the Roy Wade store up in there. And Ethel and that's that's a kind of their old one. They started asking for questions. We went to town. We bought Kenneth Earl out. We went to Idaho. Why you ought to go talk but to those people over there. For a long time, when I was a young kid, you know, when I was in high school, there was a movie house in Wonderful. You know, but as we got up from there in high school, the only movie so house was here. My dad, yeah, when the CCs and were there, said, uh, dad, Howard Levitt, Randy Levitt, and Kenneth Earl built a movie house right by the old Kenneth Earl store. And the CCs, they did well with the movie, but when they left, I think that's 39 or 40, uh, it only run about a month and a half after that, and, and there wasn't enough people in town to, it wasn't paying expenses, and it didn't take them long to shut it down. But uh, because of us families that uh, owned in the store, we could go to the shows free. But I was young and little, and uh, the, um, I couldn't watch the movies because of the violence of any kind in it. And as a little kid, that just you know, they didn't sleep that night. So our whole family would go to the show, and I sat out on the bench outside the show house. When the show was over, I went home with them, but I didn't see the show as I <laughs> Was this building meaningful to you, or did you move away before this became a hospital? Uh, Bertha lived here somewhere. And I I went to Bertha for different things. It was her bedroom. It was a yeah, and and I remember Bertha how very well, and I remember her husband. Charlie. Yeah, yeah. I really enjoyed the closeness of Bunkerville because it is the skis is strung out. Bunkerville is uh, all people in the same area. Yeah. And for the kids, you know, during the winter when things are slow, the older men got together at. Uh, Dutch methyl store on the board bench there, and they had water dishes means that we used to kid about that. They'd argue about water, who get the water. They, they still do argue about the water. <laughs> yeah, but it was a big long bench about this wide, 
run along the front of the store on some logs that had been cut off so they were all the same height. And uh, they met there at noon a lot of the times and spent quite a while. And, uh, and uh, even in the summer, we would get up early and put up hay until it got really hot. And then the horses were put away and then we didn't harness them again till the heat kind of broke about four o'clock in the afternoon. Then we started to haul hay again. But everybody would take that break and go to the store and us kids would play games and run around town and the old men talked, you know. And it was a meeting place that... Uh, That's right. And the other thing was the young people, after the chores were done, the cows were milked and so on, often during the summer sun, the summertime, we'd go down on the corner there, right with the store, and there was a grass area by the ditch there. We'd sit there and tell wonderful, wonderful yeah. stories, and lots of good lives. Big rock about this far, big round, and we'd sit on that rock and around that, on that grass in the evening and talk. There wasn't a street light no. till later, and uh, no cars moving or anything. My folks slept one house away, is all, and slept outside. And we talked and decided what we'd do and where we'd go and get into mischief or not into mischief. And the next day, my dad would always ask me about it. And I had no idea how he knew. Well, he's sitting in bed over there just listening to us. And uh, he'd just say, a little bird told me, well, we, you know, we talked. But I wasn't smart enough to know that. But. No, it really were wonderful experiences. Yeah. Growing up there and uh, learning a lot and having that with the, the real base. For our lives, yes, yes. And these old timers, when you were small, who did you remember talking to? Them? All of them. I, I can go down. Uh, huh? Yeah, so yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I can go down to the town in which I did today when I came from Logan. I live in Logan. Bay. I come through the bottom and the old rock house, uh, Andy Postfers, mm -hmm. they're still there, across the street of Cleone, Cleone Postfers. And then the next was Lem and Agnes's, yeah, and the one that Delbert had, and then you go, and the one that Randy had was around the corner. But everybody that lived in Bunkerville at that time, I can go up through the street and tell you who owned that lot and that block and how many lived on it. And I don't believe I would miss the one today. And I can start from the top, and there was uh, Ed Knights was at the top. Then you come down, and there's Uncle Herb. Then you go on down, and Uncle Jess was on the other side, and uh, Aunt Lings was right by Uncle Herb there. Then you go down, and, and there was uh, your Uncle Elmer's old school, we called him. And then Uncle Harmon, and across the street was Grandma Cox, and, and then uh, the old uh, Aunt Mary Haven lived up the top of that block above Grandma Cox. She came over when she was at the age of three in a handcart group across the plains and she was in her high nineties when she would come and talk to us and tell us those stories and whatnot. But that's one of the oldest that I remember back before this I remember anyway. Can I make commercial pause? Excuse me. It says record, but I would hate to lose all of this. Okay, let's check it out. Well, since I'm unfamiliar well, with your camera. Pra this oh. was just a practice run, isn't it? It's running. Was it? No, we're going to do this about, again. We're, we're, we're really, it's running well. It's running. So we really get into storytelling when we warm up. Oh, yes, I know. I was just saying that here. That's exactly what happens here. We went to the house. Don, we'd be okay for these. It's about 20 hours. Let's just wrap it up in about five minutes here. Just just give us another five-minute capsulization review, and then and we'll wrap it up. Make it up. Well, I, I was just telling my brother, there was one thing that I really remembered and I thought was so great then, and I still do, is to go from house to house in Bunkerville on Christmas morning, and we see everybody's Christmas in the whole town. That was just a... Uh, yeah. And yeah. one of the next best ones was the 4th of July. Oh, yeah. yeah. We had 4th of July, and the night of the 3rd, we all slept on different haystacks or on different lawns and, and we carried a bucket and then we spent the night hunting where somebody else was sleeping so we could wet their blankets and we wound up at about three or, three or four in the morning we'd wind up down to the falls swimming and then at daylight Vaughn and Ed Levitt used to set off the dynamite on different corners uh, to 
create the old bombs, you know. And we tried to find out where they was going to be next, and one would go off down with the school, and then one way over here, one up top down, and then back down, and they they spread out and set those little sticks of dynamite out. And then the bandwagon, as we called it, and Dutch and Ethel was on that every year, I remember. And the piano and the horn and playing, and they played the uh, patriotic songs and sang and went all around, and people run out with homemade root beer and stuff and treated it. And it was such a tradition. And then we met down in front of Granddad's old farm there, and it had the big cottonwood trees for shade. And every kid raced in his age group. Then they brought the coxes over there, and they all could run, and they all got the prizes. And we got the rest. money. <laughs> the prizes. They get a dollar or something and for prize. Every and, year. Uh, and, and now even on the reunions, uh, everybody gets up each year and complains about the cops coming over there with his race horses. <laughs> uh, and I said, well, the only thing about you kids, if you hadn't won, your dad would give you a lick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure, thank you for coming. They were a bit competitive. Did you folks, did you have gatherings where you made um, taffy? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Well, honey taffy? Honey oh, and molasses, molasses taffy? Molasses. Oh, yeah. Well, Somebody brought us in a tray one day when I asked that question once before. They said, of course we did, and brought us in a tray. Yeah. So we <laughs> were just wondering how Walker. far that went. Vivian. Vivian Walker. Yeah. 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 You know, see, Dorothy Wade made that in years and years when she got old. That was even not many years ago. She still made that as a tradition for her family. Town site of St. Thomas. We're going to do some exploring shortly. We are at the old lake bottom area on our way. This is where we just came from. The trail will continue here. Here's an old foundation left over from the town of St. Thomas. This is another of the old home sites. You can see that there's not much of it showing because after years of buildup, much of it is still under the ground. Here's another old ruin. This is an area where a larger structure once stood. Here's another view of the ruins of St. Thomas. Here's another foundation left over. We are on our way out of the valley, and you can see a distance, some other little ruins. And we're back at the edge of the trail. It's quite a walk, lots of interesting things to see if you have the strength and energy. There's a dirt road that goes back to the pavement. Our trip to St. Thomas. This is the dirt road that heads to the town site area. It gets a little rough in places, but if you're careful, in good weather, a car could do it. There's the connection to the pavement up ahead. It was fun to go on this trip. <laughs> 